like a dust and eye or something. All right, are we live? Usually Twitch. Yeah, I realize this first. All right, YouTube realized. Twitch figured it out. Mm. Should have really have started numbering my videos a long time ago. All right, we're live on Twitch. And we're live on YouTube. Sweet. All right, everybody. So, yesterday off stream, I was tidying up some of the selection code. And I was also adding um, some new components just to test out some stuff. And I immediately found some issues. Um, so line selection now works by distance to the line rather than by bounding box because that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, but we have an issue with arrows such as used in arrow sums like this one. Um, and mainly it is that the arrow is composed of a, a group with a bunch of stuff in it uh, to mark the, uh, to set up the arrow heads. And on top of that, even worse, they have unique IDs. So my method of creating the element again, and then comparing the properties. Um, something fell. Did it sound important? Nope. Oh, I was looking for that thing. All right. Ooh. Sorry about that. So, um, so one thing I did to make it sort of almost work was to basically just parse for this particular uh, ID combination and then remove the number. The problem with, and, and that's fine, like there aren't that many, and in fact, this might be the only place where I use this. In the future, I might add full IDs for everything anyways. The problem with that is that these all look the same, right? So it doesn't match the correct one. Um, because it's it's just not mapped up by my number. So we have a couple of ways of handling this. One would be to um, to compare other properties, not just the given attributes, because obviously this has a location, like or a bounding box, for example. So we could compare bounding boxes. And um, so at least we're getting an element in the same place. Um, we could compare inner HTML, um, which would give us the whole element. The problem with inner HTML is, again, that we might have issues with certain properties that I'd like to be able to ignore um, that don't affect which element it is specifically. Like I'd like to have a bit of a fuzzy match. Another way of doing it, it, it would be to actually make it child um, aware because right now it just finds all the elements. Basically what it does is it looks at all the elements that are in our SVG right now, then it creates another copy of the element and then it compares it. And then it says, okay, these are the new elements. So this object, requires this set of elements and then it looks in the original list to find matching elements right but it just looks at the elements individually not as a group so it doesn't understand nesting or anything like that um let's let's have a quick poke at actually doing a full inner html check so um currently what i'm doing is to test this is I have, so find SVG elements is the search function, but I made a debug version with all the logging in it. So I don't have to kind of bounce back and forth all the time. And I've changed the arrow component to use the debug version. And I think it's currently only adding arrow components. So let's just refresh this. Yeah, it's, it's relatively clean at the moment. And it's basically printing out this, right? So it's saying, okay, if, if we have a match, yeah, and I'm, I'm not looking at matching all the elements, right? I'm just looking at one of them. So one of the things we could do is map... Yeah, no, number of children doesn't really help. Um, we could create some sort of relative child matching. So between the five things, we could say, okay, if they're children of each other, and then use that as a, as a pattern match as well. The problem is the first element that we're looking for, we won't have any anything else to match against yet. Uh, or we exclude elements that have children in the first place. Hmm. Well, no, we need we need all of the elements, right? 
let's okay um sorry i'm not being super verbal about this what i want to do is so we're calling this for each of the reference elements right in the moment we're only looking at one on all the list of the potential elements that we we have in our in our svg so And I've, I've changed the reference attributes from using the DOM node list element, whatever, and I just, I'm converting it to just uh, a plain old JavaScript object. Hmm. Wait a second. So this line doesn't come from in here. It comes from um, 231 and 196. Oh. Okay. All right, so what I'm doing is this, I'm making a string of trues and falses for all the attributes that match. Um, but it's not actually going through the element list. Um, ref elms. Mm, what? All right, it's not even getting to find element. That's strange. So we're removing the reference element before we start looking. Okay, that's something I need to keep in mind. Um, ah, I'm an idiot because we're slicing element five or element six from a five element uh thing yeah it needs to be four five okay here we go all right all right all right um let's get rid of the actual list of attributes it's too spammy so this is the list of attributes we match and fail to match we could make a list of all the ones that fail so we can do, um, turn this into a filter. So that should, that should give us only the attributes that didn't match. Um, that matched. I want the opposite. I want the ones that failed to match. Okay. And we don't really care about the ones that are mostly wrong because <clears throat> those clearly aren't. We were looking for false positives, basically. That's really what we care about. And that's why that's why I had this here. So this basically only prints out the ones which are matches. So we want to look at them and see why, why they might be false matches. And... Nope. Don't want... Okay. So for example, in this case, we're looking at two paths. And they match. There's a path up here, and there's this path. Now, why the heck do they match? And why they're all up in this upper corner? Um, I need I need a test puzzle with fewer arrows. Um, <laughs> I can do two things. I can just hack the, the puzzle loader to only load, to basically just have fewer arrows in the puzzle, right? Um, so puzzle.arrows, show my info. So at this point, we already have all this stuff here, right? So we can do do some can do do what? We can do something like dot arrows dot length plus one, and we just slice off the rest of the arrows. All right. So now there's no confusion which arrow we're looking at, and it also means we can actually look at the SVG. Uh, in the arrows component or container 
And there's two. Why is there two? Um, is it because we've already added this element thing here? Let's just skip this here. Aha, okay, so there's only one. So the second one we're creating, basically, is um, no bueno. It's different. Hey there. Crazy pickies, how are you doing? What what sort of stuff do you code? All right, so let's have a look. So this is the arrow I'm creating. No, so this is the original one and this is the one I'm creating. Okay, so I think what happens is Later on, these get removed and they kind of get orphaned. Oh, okay, now I know because I was hovering over the elements and it was showing me an, a non-present element in the corner. And I think what happens is because I'm not looking at all of them, I'm only looking at one of them and I remove it from the DOM, um, we kind of get into a bit of trouble there. All right, let's try something else. Let's look at the first one. Let's go through this process again. So the first one should be the G. The problem is if we remove them. If we remove them. Ah, wait, we don't have to remove them just yet because they're not going to be part of all. Because the problem is if we're having a grouped set of elements and we remove parts of them, it changes the whole structure of them. So if I look at the bounding box afterwards, I'm kind of screwed. So we get a match, except we get eight matches. Why do we get eight matches? Why do we even look at it eight times? Wait a second. Getting eight matches? There aren't eight elements. Ref elements. Um, we're looking at all elements. So all elements is 39. And we're going through one ref element here. And in fact, we can move this in here. Like that. Right, so this is, no, this is the list of ref elements, which was used here. Okay, then we have all elements. And we're comparing to this one group element. But we're getting eight of these. So eight of them match. Okay, so that means there's groups in other places. Or it's matching against these things. Interesting. So... What if we extend the attributes to, first of all, include the name of the element, right? So, elements to attributes. And then we should say tag name dot tag name. Okay. Still eight. Um, well, let's output this um, attributes class opacity font size. Um, didn't we just add tag name? to our attributes, onto attributes, tag name, 
Adam.tag name. We don't have the tag name here. Why is that? Um, let's look at the reference attributes. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something here. There's no tag name here. Why not? Oh, because I'm operating in the non-debug version this whole time. God damn it. What else did I mess around with? I keep... Ah, uh, this is a mistake I make. I need to be very careful because then I might edit something that I don't really want to edit. Um, shoot. Now I have to be careful to not mess this up. Might have to rebuild that one and then just remove the logging. Just to make sure it's in sync. All right, uh, it's funny. I'm actually updating the logging down here, but I was editing the function up there because uh, it wasn't as far away as I thought. Right, so now we have the tag name. Let's get rid of that again. So now we shouldn't have H matches anymore. Uh, yeah, that's all sorted now. Ah, so web programming. All right, well, web programming. You can get pretty far with that nowadays. If you squint, everything is a web page. I squinted and then all the games became web pages. Ow! I just snagged my fingernail on some sharp edge under my desk. Ah! There's a cable thing and it has like... Anyway. Ah, that's gonna hurt. And I just hurt my thumb the other day. The others, on the other hand, now they're both hurting. Great. <laughs> All right. So it's matching up this. And now it's only getting one match. Which is a little... Str uh, it's not strange. Because we, we just said it's not looking at that one. Because that's not included. Oh. Uh -huh. And it just selected. Might screw it up as well. Um, so let's change it to including two arrows. So yeah, you see, now we're getting multiple matches each time. You need three matches on the second one? Um, does it? Is it because? Yeah, it's because probably this, by the time the second one is being checked. The first one hasn't been removed. Yes. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so let's see if we can use uh, the bounding box as an additional property here. Um, and to do that... I'm going to look up the function for the bounding box calculation, which I did the other day. This. So, um, <laughs> we'll do this. And we'll do object dot assign. We just merge these things together. I think that should work. It's going to be super spammy. Oh, uh, didn't like it. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, does this, is this function available? Nope. Um, just do this. Can we pull the properties out of there? Um, I say direct to plain script object. Object from entries. Yeah, 
that's not one I'm generally using. It's not iterable. Hmm, array from object keys. Ugh. Sounds array from object keys dom rect dom rect only dot prototype the frick from dom rect only dot from dom rect only yeah i think i think it's really just doing it automatically array from All right, I think we'll just do it manually. This is uh, way too heavy for my purposes here. I think the easiest would be to do something like that x, y with height equals this. And then we'll just throw them in here. That should just smush those properties in there and maybe make our matching a little bit better. The only problem is I don't know if kind of any rounding issues, whatever, might create false negatives. Right, no, right now I'm not sure which ones will be worse. Okay. Now it's too spammy to see what's going on. Okay. Now we're getting one true match for each one on a different thing that's a good start um it still won't necessarily help us when we have like imagine somebody draws two arrows on the same spot it will always find the first one so the only way to fix that would be to be more child aware uh the problem well hmm i'm just trying to think under what circumstances Hey Izzy, under what circumstances we could have the same element on the same spot twice belonging to two different things. So one of the things I'm thinking about, let's say you have multiple thermoses starting from the same cell in different directions, but the bulb of the thermos is exactly identical for each thermos. But if I move one of them, I don't want to accidentally move the, the bulb of the wrong thermos. Um, visually it won't make a difference, but structurally it might. Um, not, not as the, it's coded right now, but maybe in the future, especially if there's grouping happening. Like, with, like imagine these arrows, right? They're, they're a group. And imagine you have two arrows with the bulb on top of each other, but one is grouped with the one and one is grouped with the other. If I'm, if I'm moving the wrong one that's in the wrong group. Um, in fact, I'm wondering if instead of using a absolute bounding box to use the local bounding box it might actually be better although the circle would always be at zero zero relative to the group i guess uh that doesn't really help i think the only thing the only real thing to do here is to actually make it um structure aware so basically say hey you know um we need a list of children and we need to match those first one of the things we could do is if we sort them by number of children and check the the one with the least children first and then the parents will make sure that they have that thing as a child right or we check that they have the same parent well for the for the group it'll work um Because I, I have no idea in here right now if they were all childed to the same element. Like, it could be multiple groups, you know. Uh, future constraints might have very complex structures, and I don't want to be dependent on that. And if I can avoid making it aware of the specific structure, that would be best, obviously. The other thing I could do, instead of finding one... 
Because right now I'm saying I'm doing a find. If instead of doing a find, I'll do a filter, then at least I can I can throw an error if there's more than one result. And then I can maybe find something better to do with that later. Yeah, let's do that for, for now. So we will convert the the find to a filter. In the moment, we're just going to return the first element. And then we'll do if res.length not equal to 1. Console.error invalid match element match res was this. So if I run this now, we don't get any of these invalid element matches. Um, let's hide this for now because it's way too verbose. And then add in the remaining elements. Yeah. So for example, the definitions. Um, and I was just trying to think, okay, I could take the parent node, but then I don't actually want to match the parent node. I want to match the relative parent nodes within their relative respective groups, which is a huge pain in the butt. I'm just trying to think if there's a, a um, guaranteed way of doing it. Like these two defs match, right? Um, I think if I hover over them. And they're probably identical, right? Like the arrowheads, I think, would be exactly the same. Yeah. Ah, did da I'm, 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 I'm contemplating if I should go down the rabbit hole of creating a, a search algorithm that that takes the, the tree structure into account, right? That matches all, all the parents going all the way up. And the problem is I need relative matches, right? I don't want their parents to be the same. I want, I need to identify the parent within that group and then match that to the parent in the other group. Um... And I only need to do that, obviously, if I have more than one result. So I could do it after the fact. So I could say, okay, if we have more than one result, see if any of the parents match. The problem is, if, if the parents don't match, eventually there might be a way, like, you know, the same element might be exist twice in the thing and not be connected to the others. So I can't actually guarantee a unique, uh, a unique structure. I think what I can guarantee, though, is that they will be close to each other. I think. So we probably want to look for elements that are on the list of all elements within that number of places. Because I think when I add these together... Huh. If I... When I uh, hmm, I'm just trying to think now. So there's a, a couple of things that are bouncing around my head right now. So right now we're passing in all elements, right? And then for each element, we're actually getting the attributes. So we're gonna do that once on the outside, right? So here we're going to do let um, all at list equals and the element list here would be all elements right so it'll be all elements dot map and we're gonna map them to attributes like that because that's potentially a bunch of work uh, especially if we're gonna add more stuff to it then we're gonna pass that in here And then in here, we're just going to use this. Change that. And we don't need that anymore. That's going to save us a whole bunch of calls. Um, 241. 
Did I copy the wrong thing here? Ref attributes. Because I think ref element isn't actually used. So we're gonna pass those in as well. LM list is not defined. LM list. LM list filter attributes. There we go. Class list is not iterable. Um, where are we trying to iterate to the class list? 273. Yeah, so now obviously the problem here is we're not getting back what we're what we're we're not getting the matching elements back, right? Um, we're getting indexes basically. So So what if we do this? We map this. Um, or screw this around. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do let res equals. I'm going to map these. Two. All right, and then we'll just output this and this. I shorten that. So for each reference element, we're just going to return the results from the find function for now. Let's see. I know this is super obscure. This is not really fun stuff. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes that's just what you got to do under the bonnet. Ah, so we don't need ref attributes. We need... Oh, wait. I, I mixed those two up. So we're only passing in search attributes. Okay. So now, so for the group, we have one match. For the path, we have one match. And then for the definitions, for the defs, we have two matches. For the marker, we have two matches. And then for the paths, we have two matches, which is interesting. Because the paths, you would expect to be separate. But it could also be because we're hitting the... the because we're adding um, a second arrow to it and then we're hitting it twice. So we probably want to do this afterwards. Um, we're going to do this for each. And then we're just going to remove it. So this just makes sure that the by the time we're checking for the second arrow, we're not looking at the first one again. We're still getting double matches on on this path. What is this path? M14, 21. Is that, oh, I think that's the arrowhead path that's inside the marker, which would also be identical, yeah. It's the only diff, like these will be reused there. I mean, ultimately we only really need one of these, but it, you know, um, since I don't know ahead of time if any of the arrows are different from each other, Trying to optimize that out at the beginning was a bit of a no-go. Okay. So now the differences are purely in the in the nesting structure. Ah, and I wanted to convert these 
to um, to indices, right? So now I want to see how where these things are in the list of all things. So res dot for for each. So um, so these are the matching attributes in the original list. Right. Um, and they're, list, uh, they're an array of attributes. All right, so for each result, for each array, actually, we're just gonna do this console.log, match.map, and now we're gonna find them in the original list. No, not what? Uh, dot index off and that should give us a perfect match because these are references so this should work so 12 13 18 12 14 19 12 15 20 so for looking at this it's very clear that this element should be 12 13 14 15 16 and this one should be 17 18 19 20 21 because when the original item was created, all its element will uh, uh, appear in order in the DOM, the way that CSS returns it. It's not necessarily guaranteed, because I wonder if in the future I modify or update it, if that could get shifted around. But right now, we should expect that the indis indices should be consecutive, basically. Now, the real problem is... If we have multiple, like we can see 17, 18, 19, 20, right? But if 18 was the first one, ugh. or imagine if the first one also had us, like if all of them had two matches, then the only way to do it is to basically tick them off of a list and saying, hey, this has been used, right? And uh, the problem with that is it would take awareness of which ones have been used. So we'd have to kind of mark them somewhere, which is something I was hoping to avoid because it's going to add a lot of complexity. Ah, uh, let me think. And then we still don't have the guarantee that if there's two of each, that we can arbitrarily pick one or the other. Or maybe we can... Wait a second we might be able to get an index for the the part we're creating as well. Um, because the indices should be related, right? So what I'm thinking is, let's say every element takes X, every every object, every component we create takes a certain number of SVG elements. Could be different ones for each component, right? If I go through them in the same order that the original algorithm goes, then I should find the relevant SVG DOM elements in the same order. The problem with that is it's super fragile and I don't like it at all. It's very brittle. Like, if I ever want to pull one element out and put it back in later at a different position, everything will break. So I don't really want to rely on this. Um, hmm. Now, for something like an arrow, sort of the... The real identifying element is the path itself. Excuse me. And once I've found the path, all the other elements... Um, will re relate to that in a certain way, right? Potentially. Ugh. I'm saying this, but, you know, something like a... Um, what's the word? Something like a, an arrow, a sum arrow. You know, it has the arrow here, but then the bulb might be completely... In fact, the bulb is inside underlays. So we're not even looking at the bulbs yet. All right, and 
an alternative to all this mess is to just handle arrows separately because I know I know that um, you know I can override find SVG elements for the arrow class and then just build its own thing uh. Now we have them mapped up by IDs, right? We have this ID and this ID. The problem is when I'm recreating the arrow, it creates, creates new IDs, but I can use the IDs to link things to each other. But again, it's not universal, right? If I, either I build something custom, then I can do it very quickly just for arrows, or I create something universal, and that's a lot harder. And now I'm realizing I could have the same element twice in the original puzzle. And there, there would be nothing distinguishing one from the other. Um, I could also exclude devs just from the editor. Um, except I can't, because for the arrow I actually need access to the correct def. Hmm... Let's try something else. Instead of pulling all elements, why don't I pull all elements that are direct to... Uh, I was just going to say, maybe only get elements two levels deep and then ignore the rest. Um, Or ignore elements whose parents I already have in the in the ref reference elements list. Um, Okay, um, the proper way of doing it, let's, let's start from that. And, and I can't do this in here because of the attribute stuff, right? But basically, any element whose parent is not one of the other reference elements, those need to be matched correctly, except they might not. And vice versa, el any element whose parent is another reference element so hmm all right let's try something uh, a little bit cleaner here so for now let's just loop through the reference elements and we'd still want to delete them afterwards um, so we're going to loop through the reference elements, right? Step one, we're going to get reference attributes. Step two, we're going to find let res. We want to res get results, right? And then we want to loop through these results this way, like we just did. So that should look similar. Elm is not defined. Find Elm. Ref attributes, right? Attributes.map, not what? Ref attributes, attribute list. Um, where are we blowing up here? Attributes.map, attribute. Oh, yes. Okay. So now we don't have an array of arrays. So now this is just on res directly. Like that. That's why I did this. First place. All right. Okay. So we have... One match, two matches, two matches, two matches. Res is one. Oh. So, what I want to do now is for each of the results, so 
I'll just uh, comment this out. For each of these results, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get... Ah, wait, yeah. So we have the ref element, right? Uh, let me think. We have the ref element. Uh, um, basically, okay, let's look at the parent element, right? Parent. Node. And what I want to know is if ref elements contains it, right? That's something I want to know. So, so the first one doesn't. So that's a root element though. So that one we need to match. And then the other ones do. Right. And similarly, after we found all the matches, we should have a similar relationship. Um, and the way things look right now is some of the elements are unique. And then as, as long as I have one of the elements being unique, all the other ones, as long as they're parent-child related in some way. And if they're not, then it obviously doesn't matter which of the elements I pick. The, the problem is I'm, I'm double picking. I think that's a real problem. I think as I'm identifying elements belonging to particular uh, things, I need to rem uh, mm. <laughs> I don't think there's a perfect solution here. So the best thing to do would be probably to do the whole uh, custom check for arrows. And I think the easiest would be to to find them, them by by bounding box. Um, I'm I'm worried that if I try to be too clever here, I'm gonna end up with a really dumb solution. And the time I've spent thinking about this, I could have just done it by hand for each element already the only annoying thing is by doing it by hand is that if i ever update the render in the future my hand picking might no longer work correctly mm -mm -mm. all right i have a structure a, a tree structure that i get back from recreating the element and I want to I have a tree structure, you know, some branches. And I want to match it to a larger tree to find a subtree that matches this. Except our tree structure is not necessarily a tree structure, it's a bunch of leaves that may have children. So let's see. Um, so that tells us about the parent. Let's skip this other stuff for now. It's just noisy. So we have parent, ref element of children. And we should, for each child, or can we just do. That should be fine, right? Uh, we map map each child. We map each child and also index it into into the overall structure. Except we don't want to mix it. Uh, we don't want to um, do that. We want to map the child into our results, I think, not into the original tree. So we get a smaller list of results. So should we do that first? 
So we should, okay, Let, let's get our results first, right? So we're mapping our elements. We find elements, except we're finding only the attribute, you know, lists. So then we map those attribute lists back to And I don't actually mind flattening them here. Right? Uh, dot flat. I think that's how it works, right? Yeah. So if we flatten this and then map the attributes to the original list dot find attribute nope um attribute list so we want to pull an attribute out from this position all right and we call that match elements So match elements now should be a flat list of all elements that in any way match our stuff. Um, and then we want to potentially reduce that list according to their parental structure, their nesting structure. Uh, 271. So... Match elements is undefined. Eh. Match elements is flat list. Okay. All attribute list index of attribute. Match elements 12, 13, yada, yada, yada. Did I? That should index directly into ref elements, no? Not ref elements, what am I doing? Not ref elements, all elements. There we go. Match elements, all right, so these are the matched elements. So now this, this thing will make more sense because we need to do the same thing for this, right? So for each reference element, um, um, <laughs> and now, now I need my structure back, which I just threw away. Oh, how annoying. So for each reference element, we also want to find the parent node. But we threw away, oh man, this is so annoying. We threw away all the connections, right? So this is the list of potential match candidates. Um, and we want to match their parents within this group. Uh, is there, okay. I know it can be done. I, it's just a whole bunch of gibberish and I don't want to do a whole bunch of gibberish in case it's pointless in the end. So is this the point where I give up and I just hard code the arrow selection process? Um, da, 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 da. Because ultimately I only have relatively few choices, right? I have relatively few choices. Okay, first of all, I have to I have to combine the reference elements with the with the results, right? So we're gonna do let match matches equals 
So we want for each referent, uh, reference element, we want to have its stuff, right? Um, so I don't want to flatten these at all. Yeah, wait a second. If I don't flatten these and end up with um, match matters dot map after poop, we'll just do this kind of nesting. So now we we converted our our attributes to actual matches, right? And now we can say ref element parent node is negative one. And can I do the same thing for the others? So I should make a flattened list as well. So we can do something like let match elements flat equals dot flat. Just for convenience sake. Okay. And we need an index here. So ma match elements. I'm I'm not entirely certain what I'm looking for right now. So match elements. So for this is an array, right? So this gives us the matches for this particular reference element. And we want to map each of those to find if it's parent node. So lm.parent node is in in the the flat list of matches, right? So this basically I think So for example, First element, which is this group, doesn't have a parent in this list. The match, which is in this list, also doesn't have a parent. The second one has a parent. One of them has a parent, the other one doesn't. So that's already a place where we can filter. Unfortunately, the second definition has parents. Both of them, the second results, both of them have parents in the total list. This versus this one, right. But if I now take this one and remove it. Okay, I think I think that might work. Um, I'm just seeing a feature request. I think he's talking about it like this. Well, I'm just going to let them know. All right, so we could start removing these if their parental listing doesn't match. So for example, if our parent isn't in the list, then we need matching elements whose parent also isn't in the list. I think that's always gonna be true, right? And okay, so so um, let has local parent equals next buff not equal to negative one. All right. 
So then call according to as local parent. So now we want to call our listings according to that. So um, D. So we're we're listing we're looping through them. So has local parent match. And then if has, well, right now I'm just going to output it. But then basically, if they don't match, we got to re remove it, I think. I think that's what we want to do. It's a bit crude, but it might actually do what we need without actually matching the exact shape of the tree. So if they're different, it goes out. So if they're not matched up, we need to remove them both from these uh, nested lists as well from the as from the flattened list. And. Can we do this safely in this for each? I think we can. Um, dot splice. Splice. Um, Uh-huh. I think that's all we need. Does splice return? I don't know. Does splice return the new area or does it modify? Mod method change the content of an area by removing or replacing existing elements and Um yeah. So that should remove one element at this location. And match elms flat dot splice dot index x off um. All right, and then afterwards we're going to output these again because they should now have significantly changed. Nope, here. Let's see how that looks. So, has local parents false? Match elms. Match elms there. Match elms flat. Did we remove all of them in the end? Darn. Uh, uh. <laughs> I guess we're going to output them after or after each reference element. All right, that's our flat list. Afterwards, um, why are putting match elms twice? Um, uh, that's the parent matches. Okay, whatever. Um, so we have one, two, 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 one. Yeah, one, two, 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 one, eight. Okay. First time around, nothing gets removed because they match. Second time around, one should get removed. So we should have now one left, one of the two defs, and the one that's matching it. Okay. But match elements flat is only one now because I put that comment at one the wrong place. Okay, I found the problem. Boom. So now at the end, our match elements flat seem to be exactly what we need. Okay. So that seems to work now. 
Um, and then we apply the by tag name. This is also bad. We can't use the tag name here. Because this specifically has multiple paths, right? So we need to change that. We cannot apply these by tag names. The alums it just needs to be a list. Ah, uh, shoot. That's going to get a little complicated. All right. But I kind of knew that was going to be happening. Um, for now, I can just do this. Let's see. Um, ref LM. So basically at the end here, we're just going to do this for each. Um, ID X. We're just going to do LMs ID X equals LM. And that should give us a unique assignment of this certain number of um, elements correctly according to the original list. Super dodgy, though. Okay, so we can probably let this one pipe down as well. Okay, so we're filtering that. Turn. Don't make any judgment calls about that, good or bad. We don't do any of this now. Keys. Do we even need that anymore now? Yeah, we do. Okay. Oops. So now, go here. It looks hilarious with the scaling on the overflow why is it so thick okay so now we have to remove the code that was limiting how many arrows we allowed into the puzzle and i'm gonna put back the code to load the remainder of the elements so cages okay, overlays and line components so oh no <laughs> uh so it finds two arrows, but nothing else. Oh, okay. ah, wait, I think the arrow itself also limits how many arrows I'm going to return here somewhere. Yeah, this one. So we have this arrow, this arrow, this arrow, this arrow, this arrow, and this arrow. Now, the thing is, why do all the arrowheads light up? I think it might still be struggling with matching up the, the definitions and the arrows. So this obviously did not work. Ah, this sucks. This sucks. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, for the purposes of this, we don't, well, we do actually, we need to highlight that particular arrowhead. It's actually strange that it would highlight the other ones because it should only find five elements in total, which is the definitions element, the path element for the arrowhead inside the definition, the path element for the arrow itself and the group element. And the other ones should not, not be found. Hmm, interesting. All right, um, I'm going to let this stew in my brain a little bit. I think probably when I come back, I'm going to rip this all out and instead do a separate piece of code for the arrow components for now, so I can get moving on with the other elements. I don't want to spend too much time um, on just one thing. Um, I think there's more, more important stuff to be done. Um, for example, I want to reinstate the line uh, point drawing, which we currently don't have available, and I want to add dragging and dropping of certain elements. So, for example, if I... Uh, maybe... Hmm. Cages, you probably don't have to move. Probably with cages, it's fine. 
to move a cage by doing this. What I do want to do is be able to press and drag to draw cages. So let's add that here. Um, so this we definitely need. Uh, draw cage cells by draw slash delete cage cells by dragging. Drag and grab and drag overlay elements. Grab and uh, first highlight line slash arrow nodes points points I think it's more clearly grab and drag arrow slash line points I think these are some sort of additional core tools we want and and I was like discussing this the other day I was thinking about this list this list should be there but I think only because this system is imperfect so the better the selection system go gets the less you're going to need this list so what I'm hoping eventually is that by default, this list is actually going to be minimized, collapsed, or hidden in some way. Um, and you're just going to select things here and drag them. And only occasionally when there's some weird thing, there's like a little thing underneath here and you can't grab it or whatever, then you sh show the list. Maybe it's on a second tab or something. And then you can manually select the specific thing and all that sort of thing, right? And then certain things like center, you should necessarily never have to do this, right? You should be able to drag this. Same with size, you should have resize handles um, as much as possible. Thickness, maybe maybe they have a cursor or you press a hotkey or something and you can just change the thickness of the of the line by dragging, you know. Um, maybe maybe if I'm not near a dot, I can just drag the thickness or if I go to the edge of the line, I can drag the thickness out or something like that. I don't know. Maybe every line has a little node at the corner that I can pr uh, press to drag. So that's the kind of usability stuff I'd like to add um, for improving certain things, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm keen to add like background colors for these cages and stuff so that as you're changing them, um, the color goes along with the cage and you don't have to then add it, edit the color separately and all that sort of thing. All right, I'm going to need a bathroom break and a lunch break. And then um, I hope I'll have another stream later today. Not too late because I have a family dinner thing going on. Um, in the meantime, uh, thanks for stopping by. It helps me stay motivated. helps me to keep going. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the subs. Um, we're now over 110 subscribers on YouTube. So it's, it keeps bouncing up and down. So there's obviously people who who uh, subscribed by mistake and they realized they're mistaken, unsubscribed again. But I hope it'll keep growing, um, you know. It helps. Every little bit helps, obviously. Same same with Patreon and so on. Uh, over on svencoats.com, I have a bunch of links. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting. I've, I've ordered a sample of this mug. I'm waiting for it now. Um, I, have a, I have another sample from another company. They have a nice sort of... Uh, I like them because they have the colored inside. But I, I didn't update the artwork on this one. And it took forever to get here. Um, and it was very expensive for shipping. So I don't know if that's going to be working out. All right. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Really appreciate it. This was already the 30th code hangout. So we're going strong. We're going strong. <laughs>